Hey everybody, welcome to It Tastes Different Gaming Appetizers. Today we're going to talk about Nintendo and is doing it right. Nintendo announced a new service plan for the Switch adding 64 and Sega Genesis. Let's jump in here. So far, we don't know exactly the price or the release, but we do know you're going to be able to play classic Sega games, uh, Echo the Dolphin, uh, Chronicle, uh, Castlevania Chronicles. You're going to be able to play, uh, yes, Bloodlines. Bloodlines. Bloodlines, pardon me. And then we got, uh, you know, the classic 64 games, Zelda and all that crap. Um, rumor is it's going to be jumping up. 50%, so a whole $30 a year. Hopefully the rumor is correct, uh, because that's freaking awesome. Just awesome. Uh, they also announced two new controllers to use for your Switch. A 64 and a Sega. So I'm going to jump over to the biggest nerd in the group, uh, who knows probably more than anything about these. Nick, what's your thoughts, buddy? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. I mean, to an extent, right? Um, the N64 editions are pretty cool. The Genesis, not so much, because all those games, you can buy them right now and play them right now on your PC or anything that ha that leaves or breathes as an electronic. Because those games, Sega has released packs after packs of all those games on everything known to man, right? They're probably on a calculator, right? Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is probably, you can play it on your, your uh, uh, Texas instrument right now. So um, it's that's the only thing that that the only thing that bothers me and not really bothers me, but kind of disappoints me is I don't mind Sega games on there. It's just that the Sega games there they've listed as being available are all ones that you can currently play now. So it's not anything new that we don't already have. Right. I have the Sega Genesis collection on Switch and on my PC, and it has every single game that they've listed off on it already so i can already play those now now so for me the the best part of it is the n64 games right now for the sega part if they start putting sega games that are in any sort of collection or anything that's gonna be awesome but the n64 games are really cool um you know they did announce some of the ones that they're gonna have i think initially which is like f-zero x i don't know if that one's initial it may be later on but they did announce like initial ones and then later on ones um uh, Paper Mario 64, which is a great game. Super Mario 64. Um, or Karina of Time and Majora's Mask. I think Majora's Mask is coming later. Uh, I believe F-Zero X is coming later. But there's a lot of great games, N64 games, that they're go that they're going to come out with. So I'm super excited for that. And Winback. Winback is freaking awesome if you've never played it. Um, <laughs> so it was the first like cover mechanic game before that became popular. Um, so it's a great game, but that game was also on PlayStation two, I believe. And, uh, so it's not like you couldn't play that nowadays, right? If you had a PlayStation two and went out and looked for it, cause it's, it's pretty easy to find in any uh, retro store that has retro games. Win back is usually there regardless though. That is a great game and it's, it's awesome. I mean, 10 bucks a month. I mean, it's already $20 for their online service, uh, with their, Nintendo and Super Nintendo games. So if there's an extra ten dollars for the any Super uh, N64 and Genesis games, that's cool. Uh, I'm down with that. I'll pay an extra ten bucks for a year of playing 64 games and stuff. And they're going to have multiplayer support for some of them. So that's freaking awesome. You know, I wish Nintendo would kind of fix up their multiplayer and their kind of online service because it's kind of crap compared to PlayStation and Xbox. But that's still cool. Uh, you know, hopefully they'll get something like Goldeneye. Just think about putting Goldeneye on there for the N64 and having multiplayer support. Oh, man, that would be freaking awesome. So you can see the potential on that. Um, this is a uh, hopefully a good jump start for seeing these classic games and maybe more. You know, maybe they'll you know, we talked about before Game Boy games potentially coming to the service. Maybe we'll see that and maybe Game Boy Advance games and stuff like that. And maybe uh, maybe potentially at some point some GameCube games coming to the service. But that's awesome that they're adding uh, <laughs> N64 titles. And it's kind of weird <laughs> that they're adding Genesis titles, you know, because you think about back in the day when Genesis, you know, Sega and Nintendo were rivals. And now 
we have Genesis games on a Nintendo system. So, uh, it, you know, it, th- that's kind of weird, but regardless. And the other thing, too, is the the controllers are cool, but they're $50 a pop. That's, ooh, that's a little pricey for uh, a wireless N64 controller and a wireless Genesis controller. You know, the N64, they do make wireless N64 controllers nowadays for like retro consoles and stuff that you can buy, like third parties and stuff. Uh, the Genesis ones are pretty, the rest, the wireless ones are pretty widespread out there on the Internet that you can get for uh, Genesis consoles and, and uh, retro systems and stuff like that. But still, though, these are all, you know, coming straight from Nintendo. So that's pretty cool. I'm sure I'll get them. I already have the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo ones that they they offer to their uh, subscribers. So I'm sure I'll buy these because I have to. But um yeah, I mean, ultimately, I'm down with it. I, I love N64 and I love Genesis, so I'm hoping just for some games that, uh, you know, some of those like unpopular ones, you know, some of those like uh, 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 obscure games that were on the 64 and the Genesis that we don't really see coming out in these collections and stuff, stuff that we don't, uh, you know, really remember. You know, one of the N64 games that they are releasing is mis- uh, on there is Mischief Makers. I love Mischief Makers. I had it back on the uh, in- Nintendo 64, and it was one of my favorites. So I'm glad to see that, and I can't wait to play that one. But, uh, Patrick, what about you, man? What do you think of this? Damn, Shane, you should have made Nick go last. He, like, sucked it all up like Kirby. Yeah, I, I apologize, man. He just... <laughs> Thanks for the show watching, yeah, guys. We're good, Nick yeah. did it all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would agree with everybody. Uh, the $30 price tag isn't going to scare me off. I mean, the, the the release titles are very limited. Like, there's only nine Nintendo 64 games they're releasing and, like, 14 Sega ones they're releasing at the time with another, I think, like... I think it was, like, uh, six or seven... Nintendo 64 games in the wings. Um, as Nick had mentioned, six, Mario 64 is coming along with Ocarina of Time, Mario Kart 64, and one of my favorites, Stark Fox 64, um, you know, and then Sin and Punishment, Dr. Mario 64, Mario Tennis 64, Win Back, and Yoshi's Story. Those are the Nintendo 64 games that will be available at release. You forgot Mario Golf, which I am super excited yep. for. It ain't coming out uh, of the that, release. Yeah, that's not a but, release one. Yeah. But it will be coming, and yeah. I love Mario Golf. And they basically said seven other games are to be released later, which is Banjo Kazooie, Pokemon Snap, Majora's Mask, Kirby 64, Mario Golf, Paper Mario, and F Zero X. So, and then Nick mentioned there's just a like 14, I don't know, random Sega games. I don't know how they picked these 14. Maybe they're the ones that are, like Nick said, they're the ones that are pretty popular in all the packages. Um, but. You know, one of the games that's in there is Golden Axe. That game's out on everything. I mean, you can play that anywhere. So, uh, but I, like Nick, love the controllers. The only thing that the controllers got for them is they're officially licensed, whereas the other ones are not. So that's the only thing that's going for them. But I will buy them as well um, because I love the wireless control. I love the original controllers. So I have to have one of the wireless ones. Um, and that'll be what I'm going to get. Um, so... It's uh it's a it's a win win. I mean, if they keep adding more of their retro library and if they stay under a certain price point, they'll be fine. I mean, I don't know what the break point is for me on this. You know, if they add Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games and then eventually like DS games, I mean, that'll be one heck of a library. And and I don't know if I wouldn't be willing to pay fifty bucks a year for it. I mean, I won't have a problem paying thirty bucks a year because that's don't like next ideas. to nothing. <laughs> I mean as long as they're not coming out and saying this service is the next Amazon prime for $120 a year, I'm probably on board, but you know, I I'm not paying more than 10 bucks a month for this service. I don't care how much retro stuff you put on there. Cause I mean, there's only so much retro stuff that I have time for in general. So at $20, what's currently on there is a steal and 30 bucks is technically a steal for what they're going to add, especially if the uh, Nintendo 64 library gets much larger. Uh, Cause I'm already, I never got to finish Majora's Mask, and that's already like on my list of like I'm gonna get it, so I'm gonna do that, and and you know I got to get it for some Star Fox. I love me some Star Fox. So, uh, you know, Shane, what do you think, man? I I think I have nothing left to say thanks to Nick. So no, um, yeah, you guys hit every note properly. I mean, uh, thirty dollars if it goes up to thirty, that's that's a hell of a deal. Um, you know, you may not, 
you know, with Microsoft and and Sony, you you pay your your yearly fee and you get some new games or new ish, uh, you know, within the last generation or two, uh, but you don't get the quantity of games, you don't get the quantity of quality games like Nintendo really is putting out with their their online service. Uh, yeah, they're older games, but these are games that are just a fantastic amazing games that you know we grew up on so you know if you bought your kid a switch and you've never picked it up guess what look at the online service there's no reason not to pick it up i mean i i jump on there randomly all the time just to see what's new and and play whatever you know it's like oh my god i forgot about this one you know er kung fu i think was the last one i jumped in on um i sucked at it but i love the game i mean it was just part of my you know my childhood so I, I love that Nintendo is doing this. I love that they're dropping in Sega. Uh, Nick, I know you own pretty much everything that's been re-released for Sega, but you know, for you know me and Pat, I don't have a Sega Mini, but everything that they're releasing is on the Sega Mini. But I believe you do have Sega Mini, correct? Or no, Pat, you have it, right? Nick probably has one, it too. Yeah. yeah, I have one as yeah. well. Okay, so I don't have one. But I mean, I've probably got a copy of these games everywhere somewhere. So, but it's still an awesome deal. And like you said, if they start putting out uh, more obscure games, because that's one thing Nintendo has been doing is they put some more obscure games out on their online service too, which is fantastic. Um, I, I think it's a great deal for gamers. I think it's as long as Nintendo doesn't get too big ahead and say, oh, yeah, this is going to be such a deal. We're going to double the price, $60 a year. I think that's where I'm going to draw the line, definitely. Uh, I don't feel that it's worth sixty a year unless they really drop some big ass titles on the on the service. Drop um, those big ass titles. Everybody yeah. loves big old titles. Big old titles. <laughs> the uh the only downfall I see about this is 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 that you have to, you know, be connected to the internet to play these things. So they're a little harder to take on the road. But, I mean, everybody, I think, these days has hotspot on their phone. So, you know, and I, you know, I mean, on our road trip, I'm going to bring my Switch because, you know, why the hell not? Um, so let's see what happens. But I think Nintendo's made a smart move. It's cool that they brought Sega into this. Uh, I would like to see them, you know, just really drop those big old titles on there, though. I want to see them go up from 64. I want to see GameCube on there. You know, I want to see a uh, I want to see some great stuff from all the systems, and that's where they're working too. I don't know how well you could stream a, a cube title, but I don't think it would be that bad. So uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to get me some Mario Golf on. I'm ready to play. <laughs> I'm ready to play pretty much anything I can get from Sega. I love me some Sega. Comic Zone is one I really wanted to see on that list, though. But I own Comic Zone on like everything, so might have been right. Cool. I, yeah, I mean, ultimately, I'm hoping that they're pushing towards GameCube. I mean, I would love GameCube is one of my favorites. There's so many great titles on there, and uh, I would love to see GameCube be the next alliteration that they bring into the system, and and bring out some great GameCube games. Because, uh, and, and like I said, you know, like I said before, and Shane said as well, those obscure titles. I want to see those obscure titles. We have played the crap out of those ma major titles right uh besides maybe majora's mask right <laughs> you know i'm in the same ballpark i never played majora's mask i do own it for the n64 and, and have played it a bit but i'll probably play it on my switch and and try to beat it because that's the one i just didn't never get into but i've heard it's great and and uh so but i want more of those obscure titles some of those titles on the not quest 64 but you know, maybe like hopefully they come out with Pilot Wing 64. You know, hopefully that's coming down the line at some point. I mean, that's not really obscure, but uh, I love Pilot Wings and I loved mm -hmm. Pilot Wing 64. So, and, and some of those uh, Nintendo 64 titles that, you know, that we just don't think about, you know, Chameleon Twist. That was an okay game, but I loved it back in the day. So, <laughs> I would like to see the online really Glover. take some some of those old games can you imagine being able to play uh golden eye 
online now. The original GoldenEye and, and all GoldenEye square block jaw goodness and playing it online with your friends. That would be freaking awesome. Uh, and they would know, have to rewrite instant. the code of the game for that to function because the game never functioned that way. So, right. no, but they would. Or like I'm the original okay uh, to, Mario Party. Work. The original yes. Mario Party. That was, you know, the original was one of the greatest Mario Party. Not the yep. greatest, but one of the greatest. Mm-hmm. And that'd be awesome to see the original Mario Party be have a multiplayer component. The, the original online. drunk party game right there, Mario Party. Yeah. Yep. Mario Kart. Throw that bad boy in there. Well, Mario yep. Kart's gonna be on there, and you know, uh, you know, the uh, Mario Tennis playing that something like that. All that. games that you played multiplayer, you know, with your buddy on the same TV, being able to play the same thing online would be really freaking cool. So. Yeah, it would be really cool. But what we're noticing is that all these companies that put out these titles currently through some type of remaking, remastering doesn't do that because I think Nick and I purchased an arcade bundle not too long ago on Xbox thinking we'd be able to play again, play with each other. And lo and behold, not a single one of them have online multiplayer. It was all couch co-op, you know? Yeah, I remember that was funny as hell. <laughs> you were pissed. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, all it said yeah. was player. It didn't it did said multiplayer. It did not say couch co-op only. So it said yeah. online multiplayer, I think, is exactly what it said. Yeah, I want to say I said that too. And, and it sucked because, yeah, there was... It's like online multiplayer in, in the terms of leaderboards, right? That was basically what it meant. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of obscure and and and, and mainstream in 64 games that I would love to see that come to the system. And the same thing with Genesis. I would like to see a lot of Genesis titles that we don't have in these collections. Because, I mean, you can buy a Genesis collection on Steam or on S- Switch right now or on uh, Xbox or PlayStation that has... Uh, pretty much every single game they listed off here on it. Uh, you know, Comic Zone is on there, Shane, in, that, in the Sega Master Collection that they have on Steam and everything else. So, um, and I love those collections. I do, because there's a lot of great Sega games, but I want to see some of the Sega games that we don't typically see. Um, some of the obscure titles that, you know, no one thinks about. That's what I like to see. I just looked up because there was one game I was trying to remember uh, that I truly, truly just loved on the 64 Shadows of the Empire. I totally forgot about that one. I could not oh, remember. Yeah, that's a my great life. game. That'd be awesome to see that one because that's a yep. great Star Wars game. I love that game yes. back in the day. Yeah. And you know, one we're forgetting that's like just it screams 64 is Turok. Yeah, Turok. They did yeah. remake Turok 64. And I think uh, Seeds of Evil or whatever, the yep. expand, uh, second one. And there was a Turok 3, I think, on uh, uh, the 64, I want to say. I can't remember, though. I don't remember if it hit 64 or if it was after. Maybe it was Xbox. I don't remember. But, yeah, uh, yeah it would be cool to see Turok. Turok, I mean, that was my first foray. I remember back in the day, it used to make me sick to my stomach because of the first person and, like, mm-hmm. all the movement and stuff. But I I still loved Turok. I played it even though it I would just play it for, like, a little bit of a time because it made me sick, but I still loved the game. I mean, <laughs> you guys are dancing around the best Nintendo 64 game of all time, Conker's uh, Bad Fur Day. I knew you were going to bring that one up because I saw it when I went to look at uh, Shadows of the Empire. <laughs> That's that was a game isn't that just bad for the day in the retro in the uh, rare replay. Uh, that I don't mm, know. I don't think so. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if it is or not, but you know, I wouldn't mind playing it again on with the Nintendo 64 controller in my hand. Yeah. So I'm excited yeah. for the controllers almost as much almost as much as I'm excited <laughs> for the games. I mean, I love I, I have I have this thing with controllers. I don't know what it is. I, I love different controllers from the different eras. And you know, the bad thing about it is I buy these controllers and I don't play with them. I leave them in the box instead of playing with them when I should. But I can't afford to buy two, one to play with and one to put away. So that's a hundred dollars for every controller if I'm gonna do that, because even the Nintendo and the Nintendo 64 controllers were 49 bucks a piece, I thought. Maybe the Nintendo one was like 39. I can't remember. It's been a while. I can't but, remember. But I can't afford to buy $100 worth of controllers because right now Just I'm going to be buying half. four of them. So it's $400. Yeah. You had to play with one and keep the one in the box. So, <laughs> yeah. The, you know, one thing you got to give Nintendo is 
their controllers are iconic. Uh, I mean, Microsoft may have, you know, damn near perfected the console controller, but they can't compete with Nintendo when it comes to the ingenuity. Uh, one of the best controllers still, even, even compared to, you know, the Xbox controller is the wave bird from the GameCube. I mean, I mean, that was my first, rem- uh, wireless controller. So, uh, everything Nintendo puts out is, you know, controller wise is new and different, but somehow it works well. If you think about the 64 controller, one stick, how did you run a first person shooter like that? Uh, and they did it. You know, you, you know, use the stick. Uh, as you're up and down, your buttons are your, you know, as you're right and left and forward and back, and uh, it's it's just amazing how uh, Nintendo did that. So I'm excited for it, and I really can't wait to, uh, to get me some 64 on. Well, it's coming this October, so get to get to play that original Perfect Dark again. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. My body's ready. Take me, take me, Nintendo. That's by Snoo Snoo. The body is willing, the mind is willing, the, what is it? The the mind is willing, but the body is weak and frail and made of jelly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, has anybody got anything else to say? Because uh, I'm just getting super excited for some Nintendo. All right. Well, I'm guys, ready. thanks My for listening. Give us your 64 stories. Nick's body's ready for it. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Tell us what you think. Uh, Tell us if you saw any news that you want to hear about, you know, and uh, we will see you next time. See ya. 